Cynic acid is by far the best varroa mite treatment. It's actually cheaper. I tried Formic Pro 2018 and 2019. I had 75 colonies last year, so I had to buy three of them, and none of them were expired, and it did nothing but kill 10% of my queens. In 2018, I only had 20, about 25 colonies, and it killed 10% of my queens, but it killed the varroa mites. I didn't have any issues with varroa mites that winter, so I went ahead and I did it in 2019. I was okay with losing 10% of my queens. I paid $400 for these three. And all I got was 10% of my queens killed. It didn't kill any varroa mites. My videos are on YouTube from basically a year ago. Check them. I have proof. I did it last September. I put it in the hives, did the double 10, 20 days. So the month of October, I'm thinking, okay, my, my bees are all right. They're going to make it just fine through winter. By the end of October, I started getting a lot of dead bees in the bottom of my hives. And I realized it didn't work. So I quickly ordered some acidic acid and I bought one of these Varox vaporizers. And I did a, a, a silic acid treatment in November. And it killed all of the varroa mites. Check out my videos. It's, I can prove the acidic acid killed the varroa mites where the Formic Pro Formic Acid did not. And I called not apiaries, maker of Formic Pro Formic Acid, told them it didn't work, and told them I bought it from Better Bee and it hadn't expired yet. And they told me to call Better Bee. I called Better Bee and told them what had happened. And I didn't get a refund, so I, I lost $400. It's almost as bad as 2017 when I ordered 40 queens from Foley's Russian Bees. Half of them died during and after shipping. Of 40 queens, only 20 of them produced colonies, and they weren't mite resistant. The Russian bees are supposed to be mite resistant, like Jason Foley claimed. And they weren't mite resistant, so that first winter, I lost more than half. I ended up with seven colonies in 2018 that I was able to breed with commercial beekeepers. And I've gone from seven colonies to 107 right now currently in three years on my own without buying queens. I do not buy queens from people anymore. It's just a scam. They died during shipping. I called Man Lake, maker of that box, and told them what had happened. And they confirmed my theory. They probably died or they got hot during shipping and the ones that were dead when I got them next day, UPS next day air, they died because they got hot and the ones that I put in the hives, they died the next few days. They died because they got hot. And I asked, well, will you guys ship me some queens? And they said, no, we don't ship queens. So they know there's that, that is flawed. So don't buy queens from people. Breed your own bees, your own queens. Make sure you don't graft from just a few queens. I try to get New queens from every current queen that I have. And this right here has not killed a single of one of my queens. This does not kill queens. Whereas this will kill 10% of your queens. And last time I used it, it didn't kill any varroa mites. Now this is what I do. I don't use, I don't carry a battery around. Who wants to carry a deep cell battery around? I use a battery charger. And if I'm going to an apiary where I don't have electricity, I throw a generator in the back of my truck. Throw a cord on the truck and run a cord to this battery charger. And I bought another one of these last winter. I run two of them. One's hot all the time. And this is the bottom board. And this is the entrance reducer. I just And what I'm doing, I'm doing three minutes on, three minutes off. And I'm basically uh, two, two heavy scoops. Basically, it's level with the top of that. I don't really follow directions. I put in a lot. I wait three minutes. I come up here. I have the black clamps are always on, and I switch out. You just got to remember which one's which. When you start switching them over, at three minutes, switch one over. And then at two and a half, two and a half minutes, I get the other one set up. So that I'm constantly doing it. It only took me, there's 30 colonies here. 
and it only took me under two hours to do 30 colonies yesterday. See, look at that. Under two hours, because I know I've got to do this again in about two or three weeks because it does not kill the varroa mites in the cat brood. But you know what else I'm doing while I'm treating for mites? I'm also feeding. I'm feeding in the evenings right now because there's always a gap here or there in, in my homemade hives. And rather than feed the robbers during the day, I'll wait until right around supper time and I'll come out here and I'll feed, fill every one of these. It'll take me a couple hours. And then by supper time, the robbers go back to their hives and these bees right here will empty this during the night and they won't get robbed out. I won't be feeding the commercial bee keeper. So what I did today was after, this is the next day, I have this uh, food service tray. I open these up and I scrape them out. And I scraped out all the stuff that was in there. And I found a few varroa mites, but not a lot. This has been a hot, dry summer, whereas last summer was cool and wet. And I had a lot of varroa mites. And I almost lost all my colonies thanks to Formic Pro Formic Acid. It did not work. I almost lost my colonies. A good thing I, I got some acetic acid before it got too cold and I was able to get rid of the varroa mites. But it did a lot of damage to my colonies. My colonies were small last winter. I had a hard time restarting them this year, and I had a lot of small colonies of scound because I did an acetic acid treatment in the spring, and the acetic acid leaves residue in the hive, and I guess the small colonies can't handle it. They can't get the air circulation. Um, these are small colonies, and if you're following my videos regularly, I had two abscoundings. and it must have happened shortly after I put them in here. So I'm going to start using queen excluders on these. Small colonies are really touchy. You move them around. And it, um, the queens didn't die because I've, they were full of brood. There was just a few bees. When you have them scounding, you have a few bees and a lot of brood. So they left shortly after I moved them. And I, I'm not a full-time beekeeper. I'm a part-time beekeeper. And I didn't catch it. I did catch one shortly after I moved it. And I put queen excluder in. But I didn't catch the other two, so I lost them. From now on... When I move colonies into the window, I'm going to put in queen excluders. And it's a good idea, too, when you're doing oxalic acid, to have queen excluders in there. So you don't, they can't leave with the queen, queen can't get out. So put in queen excluders on small colonies. Do the oxalic acid, and they won't leave the hive. Well, look at the quality of these bees here. This is what you get when you breed your own queens. These bees didn't cost me anything, and I build as many hive supers as I can. They may not be as good as the ones that I bought, but they're a whole lot cheaper. Like I said, I have 107 colonies, 30 or 29 are down on my south apiary. And I'm going to be bringing them back just before winter. And I'm gradually sliding these so they're facing the south because I breed bees all summer long out here on the east side and the north side just not enough room in the south side of my property so uh, that's what I have to do I have to move them so they're facing the south during the winter you want to make sure they get a lot of sunshine during the winter bees need sunshine I see videos of people putting bees in buildings all winter long I tried that in that shed over there it's my second winter I put 12 colonies in there I took them out in March early March and they hadn't the Queens hadn't laid because they never saw the Sun they didn't know what time of year it was so I, I don't believe that works. They got to see the sun. And what I'm going to do is when I get these set up for winter, I put a shim in between the deeps and the mediums. And I, put, I load it with sugar. And then when I get those done, then I'm going to go down south apiary and I'm going to bring back my other colonies. And they're going to sit right on top of here. There's enough room. And then I'll be putting sugar on them. So... I just want to let you know, if you use Formic Pro, Formic Acid, you may find out that uh, it didn't kill any varroa mites. It just killed 10% of your queens. And they have a, they use a cop-out. They say fragile queens. That's a bunch of bullshit. It's just a cop-out. It just randomly kills 10% of your queens. Okay? Thank you.